Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I can tell people are enjoying food when there's that delay. It's like, good afternoon. Okay. Welcome. I'm Alonzo Nichols. I'm a photographer, intermediate artist, as well as being the chief of photography here at Tufts. Um, I'm also a recent SMFA alumnus. Congratulations. Keep saying that over and over. Um, I'm delighted to kick off Tisch College's final Civic Life Lunch Talk of the semester with Scheherazade Tillett. <laughs> Civic Life Lunch, Art and Activism, Empowering Youth Through Creative Expression. Before I introduce today's speaker, I want to thank the Africana Center, the Women's Center, and the SMFA for their support and collaboration to make today's program possible. We admire the work they do to support the Tufts community, especially students. And now I get to do the thing that I've been hoping to do for a long time. I've been trying to get Shahrazad back for I don't know how long. I'm so excited that she's here. Shahrazad Tilly is a photo-based artist, curator, and feminist activist exploring Blackness, play, freedom, trauma, and healing. Shahrazad is the co-founder and executive director of A Long Walk Home, a national art organization based in Chicago that empowers young people to end violence against girls and women, which she founded with her sister in 2003. She's also a proud Tufts alum, graduating in 2000 with a dual degree from Arts and Sciences and SMFA. Shahrazad has dedicated her life's work to Black girls, including those whose society and all forms of violence have marginalized and affected. She is globally recognized for raising public consciousness, changing cultural narratives, and advancing research and policy. She served as a consultant for Lifetime's documentary, Surviving R. Kelly, as the lead organizer of the hashtag Mute R. Kelly campaign in Chicago, and as curator of the Rekia Boyd Memorial Project. Her work has been exhibited at the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago, Weinberg Newton Gallery, Project of Empty Space, Columbia University, and Rutgers University, Newark, and has been featured in the New York Times, The Cut, The Guardian, Ms. Magazine, Chicago Tribune, Teen Vogue, El Decor, and Vice. In 2022, Tillich co-curated Picturing Black Girlhood, Moments of Possibility, mm -hmm. the largest exhibition on Black girls and gender queer youth. And she was recently awarded by the Field Foundation and the John B. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation for her exemplary leadership work in Chicago. Tillett is also currently artist in residence at the Chicago Cultural Center, working on creating the Black Girlhood Altar to honor and create awareness for missing and murdered Black girls and young women for the forthcoming exhibition in August 2023. It is my honor and my pleasure to be in conversation with Shahrazad today to talk about art, activism, and photography. Please join me in welcoming Shahrazad. <laughs> Ah. Oh, wow. Woo. <laughs> Thank no pressure. No pressure. Ah, um, and so it's it's wonderful that Peggy Barrett is here. Oh my gosh. Because it's, it's beyond wonderful. It's beyond wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's amazing to me, so I yeah, I met you when you and Salamisha brought a long walk home to Tufts. And that may have been what, 2008? Okay. Okay, when we came back. When you came back. Yes. Okay. And I just remember being blown away yeah. by a long walk home. Time. Yeah. I remember saying, like, this organization is phenomenal. These two sisters have done something amazing. And then Shahrazad says to me, oh, and I'm also an artist. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, it's, it gets deeper. Um, so I wanted you to tell me, tell all of us a little bit about how did you come to connect your art practice, practice with activism, and community development to take on violence against women, violence against girls, sexual assault, survivor justice, and racial justice. Oh, wow. OK, I know we don't have too much time, um, but that's like the heart of my work. Um, I just wanted to give you know praises and shout outs uh, to Peggy Barrett. This mission for this now, I think we will continue. Justina Clayton, um, and my father's in the audience as well. Uh, Colors, you need your team as a fellow alumni here at Tufts University. Justina um, and I began, I was a work study student 
in the child development department here. And so this is how long this friendship has gone in terms of mentorship as well. So my support as an African-American student um, and just anything, <laughs> you know, have leaned on to just, you know, over the years. So I'm just really, really excited for you to be here. And then, I mean, a long time would not be possible without Peggy for it. Uh, so I discovered, um, you know, again, it's like the, the nets that you need to, uh, everyone's here for some reason, and it's the people that support them along the way. Like my work is deeply in terms of collaboration. But Peggy, um, the woman, she was head of the Women's Center when I was here. And so I, um, I was here in the 90s, guys, <laughs> 96 to 2000. Um, and I, the story goes that I went to, I was young photographer and student who had this project about my sister's journey of healing, um, from a, being a rape survivor. And she told me when I was a undergrad here at Tufts. And so I kind of, I took those things, took hearing it and all my, um, unawareness around the topic, but also like my ability to really want to help her heal. And I photographed her in the healing process um, for many, many years, but it became my senior project here at Tush University. And so I was a naive student and I went, uh, Peggy, you were doing something at the, at the center for, for survivors and allies. And it was the first year you got that big grant but I courageously went to her and asked if she could help support my senior project about my sister's story around sexual assault. And, um, and so it didn't just end there because it could have ended there, but she chose to email her colleagues at the time um, at, at Harvard, at Columbia about this project that I had, this performance that we made into a multimedia performance Justina was there for the original show, <laughs> bless you for that, um, and also made art, uh, a quilt that I still have to this day. Um, and so this first show, it was, I don't know what hall it was, but um, but yeah, it kind of ended there. It kind of, and I think that's just like, she, the, you, the fact that you emailed everyone, um, and then they were like, what is this performance um, around, your, uh, what, is, what is this this performance that you have? Um, that that became the seed for our nonprofit mm -hmm. to this day. So I kind of told a quick story, but um, and then my dad taught me photography. <laughs> so uh, he is not. My mom is like the artist, <laughs> like she's a jazz singer and like has supported like every single thing. But the irony is that my dad is the one. He's the one who his best friend was a photographer, and um, he was the the family uh, keeper of memories. I would be the one who took all our photographs. And so I learned photography um, through his camera when I was like 17 in high school and then um, used it here. So it's kind of just beautiful, like in so many ways that you have these special people in my life here. So yeah, I don't know if I answered. Okay, I'll yeah, answer your question. <laughs> I, I think that I was like weeping, weeping the question. This is what I love though. This is what artists do. Oh, I have something for you. Just a moment. I love it. Yeah. Um, something that always strikes me when, whenever I think about the question of art and the question of civic engagement, activism, yeah. ways that we are part of the world, it's always fascinating because people have this sort of caricature of artists as solitary creators, off in their studio, mm. who want to escape the world right. yeah. and all of its weight. And your art practice is the opposite of that. Yeah. And so what I want to know is, what is it about art that is so well suited to affecting change in the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Ooh. Okay, so what about art is so deeply um, affecting change in the world? Um, I mean, I think that, yeah, I, I think I love how you kind of phrase my work and are reading my work. This is like a nice, I was like, it's deeply collaborative, like a fem Black feminist space work. Like even this image here that we're like, you're going to see different images over time, but like it's from that original uh, project around my sister's healing process. And so it's a photograph, and then there's a dancer bringing the photograph to life, right? So in that, how I saw the work, it moving, it living, you know, it could have been just a photography on the walls, but 
I felt like it needed to be interjected with like different me mediums. Um, and this is like, you know, this is again in the, there weren't so many models of this, but that we live in a multimedia um, world right now. Um, but this is like projection, like not, not projector, like a slide projection that I like made um, this different slides. But yeah, so I just, and then I think the next element is the audience, right? So creating a space of community healing with that. And so answering the question in this way that like, you know, something that was so siloed and so silenced around what sexual assault, specifically in the African American community, created a space in a different way. Like it was also like, I, like you know, we then toured it around the country to different universities after Peggy's initial like email to all the colleagues. And we did it for like years and years and years and even did a virtual Zoom one <laughs> with Northwestern um, during the pandemic and the quarantining. That was a whole experience. But I think it became like art became this bridge. Like I could talk about this, but my show, my art evokes different things and allows people to heal. And that's what made me like go back to school and get a music, like a um, at the School of the Art Institute and get a master's degree in art therapy. Because I saw like the power of like art in a whole different type of way. Um, and yeah, so I think like art is like, you know, I've got, I travel, like I'm doing work like right now in South Africa, like I have this residence, um, a research fellowship with University of Johannesburg. And I've used art as a tool that transcends languages. Like I don't sometimes know the language that is in the countries that I am, but play and art becomes a thing. And I'm really interested in the exchange. Like I'm really interested, like I just recently came back from New Orleans for the Black Girlhood Project. Mm -hmm. And we spent some time at the Congo Square. And I don't know if you know that, that space of the Congo Square, but it's a, it's a very special space. It's also a space where um, slaves were, were uh, by law designed that they could only be in this area to, um, they had a, Sundays were off or not off, you know, and it was always surveillance and watch, but there's a place, there's a only place that they could gather, right? So black people could not gather. Um, in, the, in the Congo Square, they could gather under surveillance of always, but like they would music and dance. And that was the place where the birth of jazz took place. So I went there recently mm -hmm. and I was just like, photographing, but I was also like about my Polaroid because I was really interested in the exchange of like, especially when you do street photography, like giving them something is really important. And I always say the image that you don't want, someone doesn't want to take, I don't, I'm not really interested in because it's so much about an exchange. So I guess like using it as a tool to get closer to people, to conversate, to learn. Um, yeah, I think, we, you know, I was, talking to other photographers, sometimes the image is the last thing, you know, mm -hmm. like that you actually do take. It's, you know. And what does it mean yeah. to take this work that you're collaborating, you're creating this exchange out in the world, what does it mean to take that and then bring it into these institutions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's a good one. Oh, I love this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I never get to really talk about it in this way. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there is a serious transformation that happens with institutions to validate the work that I do. Like, um, meaning that we, we recently had a show at the Museum of Contemporary Arts, like you were talking about, where we bought our Black Girlhood Altar Project, which is around missing murdered Black girls, but we created it during the pandemic. Um, and it was part of a Another show, Andrea Bowers is a, a feminist artist and she uh, gave, which is again, such a beautiful practice. She gave her part of her retrospective show um, to uh, young people at, at that work at the, it's a long story, but she gave part of her show. And then like, we were able to have this like really 
amazing show. But for it to be there, we went through a whole year of working with the young people, um, working with the curators, like, um, and the people that we honored were all people, that's also like the ethics around things, like the people like, so Brianna Taylor is one of the people that we honored on the Missing and Murdered Altar. But we wanted to make sure that we actually had a full connection to the family. Um, like all the people that we honored were like, we did a march for, we like helped them with therapy, free therapy, you know, like, so it wasn't just like this thing, like we had to like get, permission for their images to be part of it, but also, the, um, which is not the, the ethics sometimes, right, mm -hmm. of social justice practices, as well as, I say, art practices. Um, and then for the opening, we brought the families all together. So we flew people in for the opening and then gave them, advocated for membership for the museum for like two years. So it, it was, you know, and so they said they've changed a lot. Like, and then they also like blessed the space, which was a whole thing. Because <laughs> they were like, water, and like, <laughs> like, there's all these things that happen at institutions. Um, but I always want the people that are in these images to be able to go to shows, mm -hmm. right? Like that is, it's not just about, it's their art being validated. Um, my art being validated, <laughs> but also a space where they feel comfortable. And that is not always the case. Like we have this relationship right now with like the School of the Art Institute and it's like 3% of black people, students are, um, and there's like, even for our young girls. So I run a nonprofit that has, that empowers young girls to become artist activists and they get college credit in the summertime with the School of the Art Institute. But even for that to even happen, like you like do racial justice trainings with the staff, you talk to the security guards, um, you talk about like when you have a show, like maybe it's the security people are people that they know, you know, it's like all these different things, I think, because it's like you're thinking about people, black people being surveillance and um, that energy, like these families coming downtown for the first time to see their young people show mm -hmm. and like what, how do we make them feel comfortable, you know, um, there's parent orientations with that staff, like there's all, yeah, so I guess um, there's a serious like knowing that you have to shift everything around as you do something sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So all this is happening because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you made work. Yeah, Amazing. yeah, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So you talked a little bit about your, your origins, um, your, your evolution as an artist. Um, but I'm curious about the creation of things. I always like to say, if you were a superhero, I'd love to hear your origin story. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you create a career. I know many students at SMFA are thinking about where do I take this practice that I've been generating? How does it become sustaining? How did you resolve some of those questions for yourself? Huh. <laughs> um, I mean, I think if you're a creative, you, you could do all these things sometimes. And if you're actually not creating, you feel like you're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's it's just part of you. Like it's like something like that you need to like breathe and you know, like I like do a whole lot of stuff and I'm like, I'm not doing my practice or I, you know, um, and that feels incomplete, you know, like my apartment then becomes like I'll over decorate and like, you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, like there's just like <laughs> Um, well, I'm always creating too. You always are creating. So I don't want to take away with that, but then there's a different type of practice that like happens, you know? Um, and so I think I, you know, like, I think like my entrepreneur energy has always been also part of the work practice, like creating the space because as a black artist, sometimes the space is not there. Um, and so that, you know, for me to courageously go to Peggy and like, you know, be like, hey, I have this 
senior project can you help support it like that that's a nerve i think that's bold and i think we all should tap into like the fact that we go to these institutions and and think of them as partnerships you know i mean i did that with my the next school i went to like the fact that our young girls get college credit there is because i went to the school the art institute and it was i saw a black president for the first time in many years and i was like well, what do we need <laughs> like oh, we need more Black girl artists and how are we going to get there? You know, it's like at that stage of creating the pipeline to, to art activism. But yeah, so I, like my mom was a, um, she ran her own business. She was a recruiter. Um, and my aunt, um, who we lived with in Trinidad, and I lived with Trinidad with my dad for um, from five to eight, so some of these are me going back to my own childhood she ran her own um, travel agency. And so I have like these very young entrepreneur <laughs> memories. Like I have like my friends who are like artists and they have like the artist memory. Uh, and I guess I do have those too, but I have like, I did have the lemonade stands. I had, <laughs> my dad would laugh at me telling the story. I had Cher's library, like where like people had memberships. And this was like five, four years old. Like my nickname was like, dollar uh, <laughs> like, like, um, you know and so those are like yeah you know, like the idea of i think i saw the models of like not like what i it wasn't necessarily about working for myself but also creating creating the spaces um you know for my work to exist and for other works to exist i think what's good about a practice as a curator too is that you sometimes you um you're bringing people along you know like that that definitely is my practice as well amazing i have a million more questions but i know oh, people out my there God. i love your questions too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, i like so i thought I, I wanted to i wanted to um open up the opportunity for folks who are joining us to ask questions about the various projects that shaharazad has been working on or shaharazad's practice or or working and creating your own nonprofit organization. So this year we're celebrating our 20th year. Yeah. You know, so um, very healing and as well as um, yeah, this is where it all began. This is where my nonprofit began, I would say. You know, um, like a senior project that then becomes not just like something sustainable, but like it's, I know I've helped so many different sexual assault survivors or gender-based survivors over the years. I mean, we were before Me Too, right? Mm -hmm. And so to wait to a time, I'm very happy to be in this moment, to see um, the shifts that have happened over the years. And also that we have a lot of work to do, right? We have a lot of work to do that what's being compromised is women's rights right now and so we go forward and but you know one thing we know is that we will continue to fight so yeah yeah questions, questions. <laughs> don't be shy okay clarity too <laughs> yeah so so much of the work you do both as an artist and um the executive director of a long walk home deals with really heavy mm -hmm. topics mm -hmm. and a lot of trauma how do you handle that as someone who is constantly in this space and also as someone who is dealing with young people who are very much in this space yeah that's a great question because like when you say 20 years there's a lot of burnt out yeah. um and i worked also at a rape crisis center for 11 years so I did like direct service work um, as an art therapist. Um, yeah, and I have like, you can see like there's like my images are just <laughs> like, aren't that, right? Um, um, and I think that even when I do work around sexual assault, it is that, but it isn't that. It's about, um, it, as artists, we find beauty. And, 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 and like I found beauty in my sister's healing versus the actual assault itself. Like to heal from sexual assault is um, so remarkable um, and the courage you have to do, right? And I saw that. I saw the beauty of that, which is a hard thing to see beauty in. And so I think that's like the people, 
the community that support you can't do this work alone again i go back to the community i have a great staff i have a great board um i have so many people like over the years that have like supported the work um that continue to see it and um the work how we do the work again like doing it through art i remember a young girl said um if we didn't have art like how hard this work would be you know like every i'm recruiting young girls from between 12 and 17 in our program to become artist activists in violence against women girls only way we could do that is like <laughs> like do 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 art and we also i use play like play meaning like karaoke mm -hmm. um also like you know just double dutch mm -hmm. like we will double dutch in front of it was just just we just sponsored like the international double dutch competition so we got to like, <laughs> i got to see like how hardcore it is so like, oh, this, thing is, this thing is like oh my god it's so oh my god but even when they were double dutching they they have like they have these they coach themselves when they're like in competition like the teams and they're like one two one two one two breathe one two it's like remind they coach each other to help each other and it's just like so beautiful there's just like just all these tools to like take with you and so we'll take that and we'll put that in front of um double dash in front of dante Servin, who was a former police officer who killed wiki aboard and we claim the space where she was killed a young woman was killed by the police um, in 2012, um, shortly after Trevor Martin was killed. Um, and so like, it will, play will seem naive. Play will seem, um, you know, like just, uh, like girls are just doing something, but actually it's like so powerful and reclaiming. Like we're, we're putting it and we're worried about the work we're doing. Um, and so that's kind of a tool and technique. But yeah, that's that's really in like, you know, like uh, the work I do as an artist is like honoring folks. Um, so, you know, these images that you're seeing here, this image right here, I, there's a uh, prom, but like the girls go prom, but like in Chicago, there's something called the send off, which is more of a, like a quinceanera. Um, when hundreds of people will gather outside the house. So over here, there's like hundreds of people waiting for her to come down um, on this porch. And so I just love those moments because it's like the girl feels so free that day, you know? And so like capturing moments of freedom, um, yeah, that's like keeps me going. Like, you know, like, because the goal is for us all to be free. So like if I'm like focusing my practice on those moments, it's 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 it keeps me for the long haul. But the work is hard though, but only with community. Yeah. Hi, it's Hi. great to see you. Oh, it's so good to see you. <laughs> um, I'm really curious about the the girls that you are working with now. Yeah. And how they may their needs or their mm. concerns may be different from, mm. let's say, when you started your, your nonprofit, mm. um, because we are seeing mm -hmm. the result of COVID mm. on our students mm -hmm. and mm. trying to figure out how the changes that we need to make in support of them, mm -hmm. um, which is very different from the support that we provided pre-COVID. Um, pre yeah, um, we did a report. It was essential for me to do like a COVID report on Black girls um, because it was to capture what we were witnessing and seeing. Um, seeing young girls really be the caregivers. Um, girls were being recruited in those nursing homes, 16 to 17, like who we think about, like who was working or who was more vulnerable to be you know, where 40% of the deaths took place. Um, girls were also the ones watching people like during the virtual uh, schooling um, or daycares being closed, um, watch, doing neighborhood tutorings, like with their 
Um, we witnessed all of that and we saw high um, with mental health. We, we, it was on the edge already, but I, part of why I did the report and was about making sure we save other lives. So I was like, we're trying to figure this thing out um, where we saw like 30% uh, of our young people said that they attempted suicide um, or had suicide ideations during that time. Mm -hmm. So what we saw was on the surface of like all being adultified and thinking about caretaking as a necessary, but also lack a loss of childhood mm -hmm. during that time. Um, and yet they were in the streets like doing a young girl of ours, like she, she might've been 15 at the time, organized with her young people. Um, there was a liquor store that during the uprisings was closed down. She organized um, a fresh food market, all right? As she's doing all these other things, as I'm talking about her being mainly the caregiver um, mm -hmm. during that time. That's also what, so not only caring intern, like in their uh, interior, domestic spaces, but also ex externally, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think there, there was a high need. We did healing. We stopped the programming, <laughs> like in the traditional ways. Um, and so that's actually what was so beautiful to see that, like with us stopping that kind of thing, how they were continuing anyway. Um, we did healing circles. We did... I got like the best like therapy. I was like, who would I want to see? <laughs> like, I was like, I'm not messing around with the therapy during this time. We like, we, you know, um, shifted our, we created a fund that is still, is actually increased, I would say, since the pandemic, where we just gave out uh, emergency funds um, to people, to the families and extended it. Um, and that altar was like, we created this altar because of what was happening. Like we, like, what do people need? People need healing. Mm -hmm. People need healing. We took a altar, a monument that we kind of created. We took it out into the streets. <laughs> we took it, you know, between another video, another video, um, and also seeing the rising deaths in our community you know, specifically in the African-American community, um, I felt like the, like a altar project that has always been the base of Alawako. We've had, like when I did the SOARS performance, the, the thing that was the only set for the performance of my sister was, a, was an altar. So then we like extended that and made it the whole thing. And um, yeah, we, the first place we took it was a, a young girl with sex traffic at the age of 10 during the pandemic and just all the stories of like people, um, things going reported and people not intervening. Um, the police took her home versus getting her like a, like the motel called the police because they saw this young girl being trafficked and they just took her home, no arrests were made. Um, and so we organized a community. Uh, we, we had this coalition called Protect Black Girls um, to figure out ways of advocating for her. And we did our protests with the altar in front of the motel. Um, so yeah, those are kind of things like that, that shift to this day. I think housing is the issue um, that really faces us right now that I've never had before the pandemic, not to that level. We were putting people like in Airbnbs during the pandemic, especially that I want to say I, the college age was very vulnerable because they were supposed to go to school. And normally sometimes you're escaping like your home, the violence at your home. And then now like they're doing all these things. Um, so that, I feel like that was our very vulnerable age group and that we had to give sometimes we give them breaks to like two weeks <laughs> like this for your finals. Like, you know, because um, they would have been at a college campus um, and then they were battling domestic violence at their home. So, um, yeah, there's I, I want to urge people if you want, there's a really good report that, that we, we created um, 
called the Black Girl, um, I think it's protest, the, the protest, well, it's on our website, but the Black Girl <laughs> COVID report. Um, and we, it was also in the New York Times around April. So, yeah, that was a great, yeah. We're still, we, we have a lot. I don't think we really dealt with, we have a lot to deal with with it. Mm -hmm. And I think girls were seriously overlooked and continue to be overlooked of what happened in the pandemic. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. It's you know been amazing hearing from you. I'm just I'm wondering as I'm looking at some of the different photographs and reading and like learning about your work, how do you see your art as intervening in public space? Oh yeah. Okay, we can talk about this one. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh that's like yeah. <laughs> um, this is um this is a photograph of a activation. And so when I was in Newark, New Jersey, um when you know Christopher Columbus uh, statue came down. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually my first like outside the home. I was kind of very like not going out um, mm -hmm. and photographing. And it was the first public moment of me photographing. So I don't know if, if you guys know, but Ross Baraka um, is an amazing mayor <laughs> of Newark, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And he took down the Columbus statue, it was June 2020 um, at like midnight, like, and we got word out, like, like Salmisha, my sister Salmisha um, has friends in the mayor's office, and they were like, taking it down, it's midnight, and I was like, can I bring my camera? She's like, yeah, I'll bring your camera. Um, so it was like 20 people there. There was 20 people there. And so different, because I live in Chicago, how this was handled. Right, mm -hmm. and they're very Italian communities, mm -hmm. you know. Um, took it down to for safety reasons, um, and the person who um, was head of the like mayor's office art department, art art area, um, curated like people there, <laughs> which I found I found this out very more recently, because mm -hmm. uh, I was like, who are those people? She had like African drummers. Um, uh, indigenous uh, women and girls, and with sage, um, mm -hmm. like, uh, and then there was like a poet there. Um, so I've never witnessed a monument, and as much as like I am interested in monuments, like I never really thought so so much about that because we actually don't. We like walk past these things, yeah. and we're like they become a fabric of like. Mm -hmm an object just there, like, you just like, okay, you know? And it was that day that you realize, like, gosh, the history and the hurt mm -hmm. and the lies. And, you know, there's a poet who was like, take it down, take it down, 500 years of lies, 500 years of, you know, and I was video, I was like, video, camera, mm -hmm. video, camera. Um, and so when it finally came down and it's just left with a pedestal, Mm -hmm. I saw this young girl. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I saw this young girl, Fatima. Uh, she was celebrating her like eighth birthday. Mm -hmm. And I was like with her mom. Her mom works like, for the city. I was like, how'd she get here? <laughs> like, you know, she was the only little kid there. And she I was like, Will you be my monument? Mm -hmm. And I asked to photograph her in front of the empty pedal still. And so we then Later on, I partnered up with um, the city and Rebecca from, um, she does like public artwork and this uh, um, um, designer. And we uh, created this mural that has uh, um, Chantel. Um, she does work with like mirrors and um, she's a graphic artist. And we used my image of Fatima and the question that I asked her mm -hmm. um, and made it like in the street that was like abandoned, but yet not abandoned because like people own that, you know, <laughs> it's like waiting on property, kind of, you know, mm -hmm. um, but also across from a school. And so um, you see like the idea is that you see yourself mm -hmm. as a monument. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, 
what you saw was Fatima double dutching in front mm -hmm. of the monument. That was the last picture, the, mm -hmm. the one before that. And then for when it finally got activated, we made um, pedestals and we invited Black girls in the community um, to stand in front and I photographed them mm -hmm. as monuments. And so now, uh, like two weeks ago, I think, uh, 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 Nina Cook um, is the artist that, um, Oh gosh, uh, uh, what's the um, uh, well, okay, so we placed um, what was uh, Christopher Columbus, um, uh, Harry Tubman, with Harry Tubman, a statue, a beautiful statue. Mm -hmm. So this was like in the midst of uh, like this in between period, um, and it still is there, which is really cool. Um, yeah, this is Fatima now, like uh, mm -hmm. on as a, on front. she owns that block, which is so nice to see her like when she goes down that street, mm -hmm. like she was like, Mayor, hi, like, like, you know, like she like feels in a way that black girls don't own public spaces, right? Mm -hmm. Or women, um, she feels safe. She feels like this is hers. She feels like her neighborhood is hers. Mm -hmm. Her grandmother has like a bookstore down the street but mm -hmm. did not probably feel that way before, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think like public art is so interesting because mm -hmm. you really do get this community moment, mm -hmm. like people slow down and like, you know, like just a witness, like if you're an artist, like to see your work in the public spaces, is so interesting. Like see people like do selfies and, you know, have a different moment of what the street is and what this community is, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. I've, Lots of yeah, just for a lot of things, but yeah, like oh, thank you for asking about that one. I, I love that project, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and such a good reckoning that happened. I think that, that the city of New York is actually a good model of what a good story of the Columbus statue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other folks with questions out there. Um, thank you so much for this. This is incredibly interesting. To uh, borrow a phrase, what other good trouble would you like to see artist activism get into? Good trouble. There's so much out there. <laughs> there is. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I think, I think it's, yeah, there's so much out there. I, I you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes of like what, is personal and yet also what is needed, you know? You know, like I was like, oh, the housing issue is huge right now. You know, mm -hmm. like there, uh, obviously uh, reproductive justice is, is, mm -hmm. is everyone needs to be involved in mm -hmm. and um, advocate for, um, yeah. I'm gonna always say girls. Um, I see girls as like, I say girls are the center of our village. Mm -hmm. We constantly go for them for things and, mm -hmm. And what does it really mean to empower girls? We would see that such a transformation in, in our, our communities. They're the center, right? Um, so I, those are just a few I can say get good job. And also I always say like, use what you have to make those changes. I used photography, but everyone has something, you know? Um, we need, this is the time, you know? And when you asked about what has changed, our young people are so ready. That, that is what I've witnessed. As we've gone through all of this, I, we recruited a new cohort and they just came with such experience. They're like, I just organized the largest teachers union. <laughs> and they're like, what? Like, you know, that did not happen. Like we have very examples of, you know, we would, you know, like we do so much teaching of what happened in the past and we could, but we could do what ha is happening right now too. Mm -hmm. And they have very like, they, like, I've gone to this march, I've done this stuff, you know? Um, yeah, they're ready and they just need outlets and, and people supporting them. Any other questions that someone's holding on to out there? I know this is a curious group. <laughs> I've got a question for you. <laughs> um, I want to know, uh, what are you reading? Who are you listening to? Mm, gosh. Ah, gosh. What are you reading? <laughs> huh. Um, 
um, what am I listening to? I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, hmm. Well, I'm going to say Tallahassee Coats. Um, this incredible person as well. And I'm going to say, like, I just came back from Trinidad two weeks ago, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give Soka some love right now. Yes, yes. <laughs> All that energy keeps me going too. So yeah, yeah. Afro beats all the time. Yeah, I feel like that's where it's at. Maybe one day we'll have to get you to come back and do a karaoke session. Yeah. That's awesome. that, that's like cool. City Girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, the, I, the, when I photographed them, we could go back to that one. Um, the, the last one, when I photographed the girls, the girls that I wanted to honor during the pandemic, and I, we made the altar, but I also wanted to honor girls on it. Um, I originally like had music and it was like Aretha Franklin, like Spirit or um, Amazing Grace. And they were like, okay. And then <laughs> what they were listening to, I, like Twerk Later. I got first introduced to Twerk Later <laughs> and it like totally changed the energy. Um, and it was just like, oh yeah, that's great. So we have like a mix for the altar and it's like Twerk Later and Aretha Franklin. Um, but yeah, just kind of like also honoring that too. Yeah. Um, any 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 sort of final thoughts for developing artists out there? Oh no, by the way, go ahead. Yeah. No, it's okay. Oh, so, like going off of that, uh, the previous question: What other artists mm -hmm. are you? Because uh, you are you believe in collaboration? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh gosh, gosh. Well, I'm going to ask Simone Lee's. Uh, talk tonight, so I would say uh, um, definitely do that. Um, it was at Boston Con Institute. I, I forget. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. I saw that happening in Boston, and I was like, oh my god, it's the same day. Um, yes, I would add, yes, I'm like always going to shows. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like, you know, constantly looking at things. Um, gosh, who's work right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's a uh, artist. Uh, there's a couple artists. Like I, I'm collecting work all the time too. Like I believe in like, like I'm always looking. I'm a person who emails the galleries. I have stuff on layaway. I have stuff I just buy with the with the new artist work. Yeah. Like I think that's it about supporting artists. Um, also like create having work around you that uh, inspires you. Um, yeah, so I have this new work. This God, I just don't know the, the, how to say the person's name, um, but they are from South Africa, and I saw their work, um, and it's around looking at black beaches mm. after mm. apartheid. Mm. It's just pretty amazing, and I bought like the video. <laughs> like I was like the video was like amazing and in print. Um, so like what you know like what are we gonna do with this video at my house? But you know it's it's also just kind of how it's in the line of freedom and um, any Derek Adams um, work. His work is uh, uh, Latoya Fraser is like as a photographer, you know. Um, also she started photographing at the age of like sixteen. Um, but yeah, those are kind of my go tos. I would say every every you know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my dad. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know anyone who won a Pulitzer Prize? <laughs> <laughs> and how her writings uh -huh. influence you? Ooh. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my sister won a Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> <laughs> Huge and amazing. I guess this time last year we were celebrating. Um, yeah, we are always collaborating. We're like always collaborating. Uh, we're both each other's thought partners in different ways. I think like she's like, I'm writing this new book about Nina. Like, what do you like? You know how to tell a story. How do you, you know, she's brainstorming. I'm always like going to her. Um, 
yeah, I think like, yeah, you see us all, like we go from sisterhood, I think be, having such a project for so long, I photographed her for 15 years mm -hmm. of the Soros documentary project. And so we kind of learned to like, of sisterhood and collaboration and um, do things differently. Like I'm the visual artist and then she's like the writer of our time um, and, the, and the critic of our time. And so, um, yeah, she's, I, I think, I don't know, you know, just her seeing the world, how she sees the world, how she weaves in her personal stories with uh, academia and like, um, just, uh, in, yeah, her quick read of things. I think like, like, I, like I'm curating the show right now and I'm like, how do we tell the story? It has to tell the story. Like, we can't just, she, she, you know, sometimes our artists are like, I went to, uh, I had an exhibition, they were like, oh, artists, people don't read the text, you know? And like, no, I did a show with a writer and she like, and the, how like the text could like move somebody through the work, right? Like how that cruel statement, as well as like having certain type of labels could really help like, the picturing black girlhood show um people complimented us on like that like they're like i've never seen these kind of labels i'm like never got a compliment on labels before um but that was like being able like she really pushed me as a writer who were the curators of that to like what to tell the story how do we tell the story like that forever changed my relationship i think to doing a show and like really understanding the importance like because we do really like do like the narrative of the the art, but like if you want somebody to move through your work a certain way, like really help them through that and weaving out things. So yeah, so that's always just and I think as a person, like her courage to heal and share her story so publicly um has always inspired me. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question, Dad. <laughs> I love it. Um, I just have to say, like, like I said, I, I have been hoping to get you back to Tufts oh, all this time. <laughs> this has been such a wonderful conversation. Yeah. I want to thank everyone for coming out this afternoon. Mm -hmm. And please join me in thanking Shahrazad.